Hello guys, today we discuss anesthesia for patients with a liver dysfunction. And uh, of course about the cause of cholopathy in advanced liver failure. Multifunctionary uh, vitamin K deficitly impaired storage or absorption, impaired synthesis of cholesterol factors, all except factors. 8. Splenic sequestration of platelets if chronic alcoholic, they may be bone marrow suppression, low grade disseminated intravascular coagulation, the liver clearance fibrin degradation products, so accumulated uh, farnesyl diphosphate synthetase inhibit platelet aggregation and normal cross linking of fibrin monomers. Vitamin K dependent coagulation factors factors 2, 7, 8 and 10 and protein C, S and Z. A better test of acute liver dysfunction. Protrombin time or albumin. Protrombin time which Collectively measures factors 2, 5, 7, and 10. Biosynthesis of factors 2, 7, 8, and 10 depends on vitamin K. Clotting factors have rapid turnover with a half life of 12 hours as compared to albumin, whose half life is in 18 20 days with a slow 4% degradation day. Therefore, measurement and of the protrombine time is the simple best acute measure of hepatic this synthesis and function and help on both the diagnosis response and assessing the prognosis of acute parenchyma liver disease. still greater 1.5 implies severe liver disease. 333p to correct PT within 3 seconds or normal or iron less 1.5. Crave Precipitate for fibrin again levels below 100 mg deciliter and transfusion of particles to live above 100,000 or transfusion serocot 50,000. Uh, Dismopressin may, may be efficacious and the most prognostic uh, PT is the best prognostic indicator for recovery of the liver function and may be very resistant to attempt normalization with factor replacement the therapy. The factor in the treatment of bleeding and liver disease has been used safely to treat patients with acute hepatic trauma, bleeding after liver biopsy, bleeding from chronic liver disease with cirrhosis. After liver transplantation is, however, only effective if there are adequate levels of platelets and fibrinogen. Causes of ascites and cirrhosis. Ascites is pathologic accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Etiology of ascites is multifunctional. Factors that cause generalized accumulation of fluid. Decreased synthetic function or liver leads to hypoalbuminemia, which leads to reduced oncotic pressure and leaking of fluid into the peritoneal cavity. Nitric oxide induction was a deletation activation of renin angiogen aldosterone system with the sodium and water retention. Factors that lead to localized fluid accumulation in the abdominal cavity. Raised intrahepatic vascular resistance with the portal hypertension along with splunkening was a deletation lead to increased portal flow. Increased splunkening production of limbs due to raised portal venous flow and do seepage of lymph from lymphatic channel, uh, channels uh, disrupted by nodular regeneration. Risk assessment in chronic liver disease. CTP and the model for the end-stage liver disease scoring systems are the most frequently used tools to predict peripteal risk in cirrhotic patients and avoid abdominal surgery exclusive or portosystemic shunt procedures. Model for end stage liver disease. Development at Mayo Clinics to assess three months outcomes for patients undergoing transuvular intrahepatic.
portosystemic sound. The calculation is done as follows. We can see this formula. And the maximum score is 40. The melt score includes serum sodium value to further refine the evolution of the cirrhotic patients. Melt classification may be better at prediction 90 days mortality than child score even in patients undergoing other surgeries. A very recent study found that in patients undergoing non-transplanting surgery, child predicts 30 days mortality and male predict 90 days mortality. And of course male now predicted one year mortality. Risk factors associated with operative complication in surgery patients, male, a high child score, ascites, cirrhosis other than primary bitter cirrhosis, elevated serum creatinine, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, preoperative infections, upper bleeding, ASA 3 or 4, high surgical surgery score, surgery of the respiratory system, intraoperative hypertension, renal syndrome is a form of functional renal failure that can occur in patients with acute liver failure or cirrhosis. Faltered hypertension causes planchnic and cystic arterial vasodilatation, likely due to overproduction of nitric oxide and prostaglandins. This arterial vasodilatation leads to relative renal hyperfusion and activation of the renin and getting aldosterone system. This produces renal vasoconstriction and a decreased glomerular filtrage rate. There are two types of hepatorenal syndrome described, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 with a rapid onset and very poor prognosis, and type 2 with a more gradual onset and associated with a better outcome than type 1. Both types can be seen with a diuretic resistant acids. Treatment mainly involves, of course, diuretic withdrawal, administration of albumin, use of mitodrin, octreotide transplantation facilitation, definitive treatment, liver transplantation. Hepatopulmonary syndrome. Hepatopulmonary syndrome is a triad consists of liver disease, hypoxemia, and intrapulmonary vascular shunting. The intrapulmonary shunting causes ventilation perfusion mismatch and increased alveolar arterial oxygen gradient. Classically, these patients may have platypnea and orthodoxia. Platypnea is a shortness of breath that is related by lying down and falling when sitting or standing up. Orthodoxia is hypoxemia that is worse in the upright position and gets better when lying down. The exact mechanism of this unusual pulmonary sign is unknown. If a patient is suspected of having Halopara syndrome, Diagnosis can be confirmed by echocardiography, injected agitated solin with a PA as air bubbles on the left side of the heart 3 to 4 beats after the original appearance of the agitated solin in the right atrium. The only definitive treatment of this syndrome is liver transplantation. Portopulmonary hypertension is defined as a mean pulmonary artery pressure greater than 25. In a patient with a known liver disease and poultry hypertension, the exact etiology is unknown, but histologically there is pulmonary and endothelial smooth muscle proliferation and often thrombus in situ. There does not seem to be a correlation between the severity of the liver disease and the severity of the pul uh, portopulmonary hypertension. Diagnosis is often made during a pretransplanted echocardiogram. A mild pulmonary arterial pressure above 45 is considered an absolute contraindication to liver transplantation. Major factors contribute to postoperative liver failure, pre-existing liver disease, massive blood transfusion, hepatic oxygen deprivation, sepsisemia, drug toxicity. Common cause of postoperative junctions, immediately postoperative junctions, hemolysis, anesthesia, hypertension or hypovolemia drugs, infection of sepsis, bleeding or resorption of hematoma, immediately postoperative jaundice, bile duct ligation, strictures of surgical inj injury, hepatic artery ligation, retained common duct stone, postoperative pancreatitis or cholecystitis, acute viral hepatitis, 
Gilles Perry syndrome or Jubin Johnson syndrome, inflammatory bowel syndrome, heart failure, pulmonary postoperative jaundice, blood transfusion, delayed postoperative jaundice, drugs, blood transfusion, status after intestinal bypass, total parenteral nutrition. Repetitive risk factors associated with the complication and mortality, the scoring system, patient specific risk factors, male, age more than 70 years old, preoperative infection, cirrhosis other than primary bilirubin cirrhosis, elevated creatinine, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, intraoperative hypertension, upper gastrointestinal bleeding, ascites, higher risk surgery, abdominal surgery. Surgery, open holocystic ectomy, cardiotology surgery, trauma laparotomy, esophageal surgery, history, clinical examination, investigation, hematological, cardiorespirology, metabolic, and of course to know the pattern of disease, we can see the analysis. Jan the synthesis ability of liver, other tests, uh, of course the role of echo is this ventricular function, valvular function, pulmonary pressure, and may be used intraoperatively to allow for real-time hemodynamic monitoring and volume management. And of course, preoperative preparation. Excess hydration status, correct anemia, coagulation, hyperalbuminemia, orange appropriated blood products, informed postoperative complication. In premedication, sedative premedication should be avoided in the encephalopathic patient, and other drugs may be needed preoperatively and include antibiotic and H. receptors antagonist, delayed gastric. Emptying is not uncommon. The oral or intravenous route should be used for administering drugs. Intramuscular injections should be avoided. And of course, the rules of anest uh, for anesthetic consideration. Our main goal: maintain supply oxygen, demand relationship in liver, maintain renal perfusion, avoid hypertension. In the presence of the portal. Hypertension, hepatic blood supply is dependent on hepatic arterial blood flow. Avoid all forms of anesthetic that can be reduced MAP and thereby reduce hepatic blood flow. Choose appropriate anesthetic agents, metabolism of drugs and effect on the circulation. Sedative remedication should be avoided in the encephalopathic patients. And of course, intraoperative monitoring, non invasive monitoring, peripheral nerve stimulation for neuromuscular blood monitoring, temperature monitoring, central venous pressure cause monitoring, blood glucose monitoring, coagulation monitoring, and of course, our urine output should be also be monitoring. It is imperative to know about the anesthetic drugs, metabolism, and its effect on hepatic blood flow. Large boy access is mandatory. The choice of drug anesthesia suggests technical induction of anesthesia using propofol, succinylcholine, and fentanyl, followed by maintenance with oxygen, air, isoflurane. Touch controlled infusion of propofol is an alternative to inhalation anesthesia. Atracurium is preferred for maintenance for neuromuscular block. Ventilation is controlled to maintain arterial uh, between uh, 4.5 and 5.3. Appropriate antibiotic prophylaxis is required before surgery. Coagulation and fibrinolysis are major concerns. Blood conserv conservation with the cell cell should be considered particularly in the patient has portal hypertension and bleeding is likely to be heavy. Patients with the required postoperative admission to the intensive care unit and should undergo elective ventilation until cardiovascular parameters are stable and there is no evidence of bleeding. 
Patients controlled analgesia using fentanyl or occasional morphine is well tolerated in patients with a compensated liver disease. And of course, we must uh, think about the tab blocks or local inhydration is recommended. And about the halotan associated hepatitis. And that's all. Thank you for watching. Relax is a healthy choice.